The 2012 Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards Night at the Royal Observatory Greenwich was a star-studded affair, with astrophotographers and astronomers descending on the observatory from all over the country. This year's winning images included spectacular shots of the aurora, distant nebulae and June's historic transit of Venus. Martin Pugh was crowned overall winner with a stunning image of Messier 51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. I caught up with Sky Night regulars Pete Lawrence, John Coulshaw and Paul Abel to get their thoughts on this year's competition. The standard this year was absolutely incredible. The one which is the real controversy is the one which won the solar system because that is quite a strange image to pick. It's not technically perfect, it's a picture of the transit of Venus taken through clouds, but it's got a great artistic feel. It's also it. so very representative of British astronomy. It is, absolutely. <laughs> yes, it, it there really is a story is. behind it. Yeah. They should have called that piece Hopeful. <laughs> John, do you have a favourite image? Well, yeah, the, the, the picture of the transit of Venus there, it, it really caught the story of what it's like when you're waiting to grab those images mm. and how you've got to seize the opportunity. Mm. And that was what you can That's just it. imagine. Yes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and he got it and <laughs> rewarded tonight. Uh, one of my uh, other favourites was of the um, a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, mm. uh, where there was all of those misty blues. Oh, that was a lovely lovely. And, and, and the red light from the, yeah. uh, the headline, yeah, I like that. I think, I think Chris Linto actually summed that up very well because it looked like a 60s sci fi movie. Yeah. Really you can imagine your Patrick Troutman doctor <laughs> running through it going, Oh my giddy oh <laughs> There were some incredible yeah. images in deep space as well, we have to talk about this year. What I like about some of them were the fact that they showed dust in incredible detail. Do you really? know the one that was my favourite one? I, I don't normally bother with deep sky because it all, from a visual point of view, it all looks the same. <laughs> Largely, but the, 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 the supernova one. Uh, um, what was the chap's name? Do you recall? Well, Rogelio. That's it. Um, it kind of looked like a cat's cradle mm. of filaments. Ah, uh, that, that image. And that was just stunning. That image is, you don't really get to appreciate how difficult that is to photograph. I've tried to image that, and I think I took a sort of 20 to 25 minute exposure Great using heavens. a cool CCD camera, yeah. and I picked up the faintest whispers Because he had no really. end of structure inside. It looked like a cat's cradle. It's an incredible uh, image. structure. It really is. I thought that, honestly, I, that was, I thought that was the best image I've ever seen in these space. Everybody was so full of praise and rightly so for the uh, young astrophotographer of the year. Uh, the, the way that he got th that image with all of that wispy detail around the edge. Uh, surely a, a new genius in our midst there. We shall watch his career with great interest. That was, that, was a, that was a very surprising image because when you saw it you thought wow that's a great picture of the Pleiades. Does that stand up against the other images like the M51 and whatever? And then you remembered it was actually in the young yeah. Mm, absolutely. And so that, that blew me away when I saw that image. It's just, I mean, it's just astonishing. The, the, the colour, and again, to go back to this, the structure that he captured, this wasn't a misty grey blob with some stars in it. No. This had a lot of structure and depth to it. I mean, I feel of admiration, I am just about photograph cats, so anybody. <laughs> Anybody you can photograph in like the and get that structure in that nebula, I, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty special. The other one which really astonished me, which I had difficulty coming to terms with, because it is just so good, is the elephant's trunk shot yeah. in the best oh, view right. mm. category. Yeah. Because that is it's, it's a professional mm. looking photograph. Yeah, it it's is. It's incredible. And that, that guy is, has done such an amazing job. He is really, we keep saying this over and over again, he's really going to be one to watch. Mm. Because that, after a, or less than a year, he's been photographing deep sky. Wow, what's he going to be doing after four or five years? It's a competition for Damien, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Gents, thank you very much for speaking to Scott Night magazine. Thanks, Will. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. While many of the guests admired the exhibition of winning pictures, I spoke to some of the competition's judges about a few of their favourite images. I thought the, the picture of the Pleiades taken by a young astrophotographer is absolutely beautiful. You can see all of those wispy... Mm, there's an incredible amount of dust there. Mm, it's an incredible shot of a very familiar uh, sight in the night sky. And I very much like looking at those, those, those objects that you can recognise. Even in the middle of London, you can see that in the winter sky. And seeing so much detail, seeing it in a completely new way, I thought that was a, a really fantastic picture. The robotic scope winner was quite an interesting image of a galaxy. It was. The, the Sunflower Galaxy. 
galaxy. It was a picture taken by a 13 year old boy on a robotic telescope. Um, and I love the way that image, uh, the, the galaxy just looks like it's floating in the middle of space. Um, I was speaking to the, the young man that took that picture earlier in this evening. Um, and he was saying that many of the, the kids in his class had taken pictures with the robotic scope, but only he entered. Um, I think his teacher told him to, there was this competition, he looked it up and he entered. Um, and it was really wonderful talking to him. He says he's now begun a GCSE astronomy class, and what he loves most about astronomy is that there's so much we still don't know, and these open questions that make him want to learn more. Um, and as a science educator, that really made me quite pleased. I thought we had a couple of really good stories this year. Uh, I love the Firefly picture, which I'm presuming everyone's talked about. You've got the beautiful star trails, and then um, for us in the UK, fireflies are so mm. exotic that those little green traces just look amazing. Yeah. Uh, I want to go and see that. Uh, but my favourite is the Lost in Yosemite one. I don't There's know a great story with this one, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. It's, it's called Lost in Yosemite. It's a beautiful shot of the Milky Way in the people and space category. But the two people pictured who look like they're poring over a map really are. They Just about uh, 20 minutes before that picture was taken, they'd come up to the photographer and asked for directions in the middle of a national park in the wilderness in the middle of the night and he pointed them on their way and they got that far and then stopped and had an argument. I'm not even sure we know if they got out, do we? We, we don't. If they're watching yeah. or if you're on the internet and you know people who got lost in Yosemite and met an astrophotographer, then we, we'd love to know. I love the fact they don't know they're in the picture, but it really <laughs> when, you, when you see these amazing deep sky pictures mm. the feeling you get is often of one of being lost in the universe yeah. and I love the wit of the literal play on mm. that, I think that's a, that's a lot of fun Speaking of deep sky images did you have a favourite in that category? Uh, well, it's hard to go past the winner, really. Mm. It's another win for the deep sky. Mm. Uh, Martin Pugh's second win in the competition, actually. Um, but that Whirlpool galaxy image, it's not so much the galaxy itself, although that's well done. It's the faint, wispy white traces yep. around the back. Mm -hmm. You could start, I mean, as a, somebody who studies galaxy mergers, I want to start unpicking uh, the history of that merger, that interaction from that photo. It's, I, I, honestly, it's the best Whirlpool image I've seen, and I'll add the Hubble. Mm. into that so I think it's hard to go past that one. I mean, was that your favourite? I think what I like about that image is as, aside from the main galaxy itself is you start to look into the background and see all the little faint galaxies peppered around it's absolutely incredible. Yeah the Perseus one was like mm. that as well the Perseus cluster with the cluster of galaxies along the edge that, that was good. Do you have a favourite from the our solar system category? Yes, I do, um, and it is actually the, the winner of mm. that category, the picture of the transit of Venus, but not in glorious technicolour, seen fleetingly through a gap in the clouds from Blackheath Common. I was there with a big group of people when the, photo the photographer took that image, or I didn't realise it at the time, and for me that just captures the, the drama of that moment. We honestly thought we weren't going to see it, and then the clouds cleared, we caught a glimpse and that was it for another 105 years, so for me that's a really personal you know, I was there and I saw it in 2012. If you have one tip for a astrophotographer who's maybe just starting out and is maybe watching the video, what is it? What, what would you say that they should do over this next year? I would say don't worry too much about equipment, don't worry too much about experience. Get your camera, get out there, look for things that, that just look striking, that look beautiful and, and, and start snapping um, and see what comes out of it because you may surprise yourself and certainly newcomers have constantly surprised us in the competition over the last four years. If you want to see all of the winning images from the competition you can find them in the October issue of Sky at Night magazine available from all good news agents. But from me here in Greenwich, that's it. Clear skies and I'll see you again next time.